wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss one of the most profound mysteries in all of science, the origin of life. Because for a very long time, scientists assumed that life as we know it possibly started somewhere on Earth, very likely around some kind of a hydrothermal event, roughly around 4.3 to maybe 4.4 billion years ago. But recent discoveries and some of the recent propositions are slowly making us reconsider all of this. Because what if our true ancestors actually came from Mars? Or wait, it's actually right here. And so what if we are technically Martians? You know, kind of like the old saying, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Although in this case we seem to be all from Mars. But in order to understand these propositions, and in order to understand why this might make sense, we do have to go back in time a little bit and imagine Earth right after it was initially formed. So Earth, 4.54 billion years ago. And at this time the solar system was extremely violent and very chaotic. This was not a welcoming home. As a matter of fact, based on a lot of evidence, we actually believe that approximately 30 million years after Earth was formed, it was then hit by a Mars-sized object referred to as Theia. This was the event that eventually resulted in the formation of the Moon. And so in essence, just after Earth formed, it had to reform again because of this very powerful collision. And if there was any life forming here, it must have been completely reset. Nothing could survive such an event. And so here, for at least the first 40 million years, it was extremely unlikely that Earth had any conditions for life to form. Which brings us to the next concept referred to as abiogenesis. The natural process by which life seemed to have arisen from non-living matter and from simple organic compounds. And it's extremely unlikely that this was not some kind of a single spark event. It was more likely to be a slow process that created more and more complexity over time, going from very basic chemistry that has been recreated in the lab many, many times, eventually forming self-replicating molecules, which then led to initial cells and membranes. And we've actually talked about several experiments that have been able to recreate quite a lot of this in some of the videos in the description. But here there's a bit of a problem, the timing problem. So basically this is where the mystery kind of deepens. Scientists that use genetics to trace the tree of life by trying to find out when things evolved, eventually discover that everything seems to have started with a common ancestor, Luca, the last universal common ancestor. Most likely a very primitive bacteria, or possibly a protobacteria, that based on genetics seems to have existed approximately 4.2 billion years ago. This is based on discoveries of bacterial fossils from billions of years ago, and by using genetics to try to trace back the origin of certain proteins. But here, if you do the math, it looks like life very likely appeared on Earth only 290 million years after that moon-forming event. And while this might sound like a long time, for chemistry to turn into complex biology and to then diversify into ecosystem, this actually seems to be like a very tight window. Which is why certain researchers started to look for alternative explanations. Maybe the neighboring red planet. And specifically this planet, Mars. But why Mars? Well, because of one simple reason. It seems to be slightly older than Earth and thus had just a little bit more time to do all of this. As a matter of fact, this planet formed approximately 4.6 billion years ago, and crucially, it did not experience any global melting similar to Earth. And so when Earth was still a bowl of magma, early Mars potentially looked something like this. It already had a protective atmosphere, liquid water, and even geothermal hot springs. The locations where we think life very likely started. But more importantly, there is actually a chemical reason as well. And this is based on an argument from over a decade ago, when Professor Stephen Banner argued that early Earth was missing one extremely important ingredient in order to build RNA. In this case, RNA is actually believed to be the first genetic molecule to appear. And to make it, you do need minerals containing boron and molybdenum. And it just so happens that early Earth was extremely poor in these elements. Or it was in the wrong chemical form and was extremely difficult to extract because at this point the planet did not have any oxygen. And so producing RNA in this case would have been extremely challenging. But we know for a fact that boron was present on Mars for a very long time. And early Mars was extremely likely much drier and more oxidizing. Which implied that many of these life-starting minerals were extremely likely abundant and widely available here. 
and would thus create a higher chance for RNA to form. And so here the hypothesis suggests that life very likely started where chemistry was much easier. And in this case it was much easier on Mars. And in order to get to Earth, it then had to hitch a ride, very likely on some kind of a Martian asteroid or meteorite, produced during some kind of a collision. This is of course the idea known as panspermia. And for this to work, these early Martian microbes would have to survive a truly impossible journey by first surviving the impact that created the asteroid, and by then surviving the extreme vacuum and radiation in space for at least several months. And lastly, they also had to survive the entry into the Earth's atmosphere and the final impact on the surface. But it just so happens that based on several experiments on the International Space Station, many of which we've discussed previously, scientists are now pretty convinced that a lot of microbial life can easily survive most of these events. One example we've discussed in one of the videos in the description, the bacterium scientists refer to as Conan the bacterium, can pretty much survive any of this. And so technically microbes trapped inside the meteorite that was large enough could have been easily shielded from all of this even for hundreds of years, maybe even longer. And so in that sense, at least theoretically, it does make sense. But despite of this, at the moment, there is still a lack of actual evidence. Ok, we do have some evidence from Mars, but none of it is definitive yet. In other words, there is no smoking gun for Martian life at this point. But a lot of rovers, including Curiosity and Perseverance, have discovered many different hints. For example, Curiosity discovered a 3 billion year old organic molecule inside the Gale crater that does have a very high chance to have been formed by some kind of life. And more recently, in 2024 and 2025, Perseverance rover discovered potential biosignatures inside the Jezero crater, and specifically inside the sample referred to as Shivaya Falls. We've discussed this in one of the previous videos in the description because this was a super exciting discovery and right now it's difficult to explain unless it was produced by life. And so here these mineral patterns and organic compounds do suggest that some microbial life might have existed on Mars a long time ago. But there's still a chance that maybe it was really not Mars and maybe the Martian life basically came from Earth and not the other way around. Mostly because back on Earth, we continuously find new ways and new locations where life could have maybe started in some very surprising ways. For example, one of the recent discoveries suggests volcanic glass. This was something that was very likely definitively everywhere, mostly because volcanoes were super common back in the days. And here volcanic glass seems to actually help assemble very long chains of RNA much more efficiently than anywhere else. Additionally, scientists also discovered simple ferrous iron that could have driven basic chemical cycles of life even before enzymes existed. So in other words, the idea behind Earth being the origin of life is still pretty strong. But then I guess there is a question of why does this even matter? Why spend billions of dollars on sending Martian rovers? And why would it even matter if we're Martian? Well, first of all, it actually tells us a little bit more about probability of life out there. Or basically, the idea behind alien life. If life started on Mars and Earth, in other words, if both started independently, it suggests that life out there is super, super common. It basically means that many different planets and many different moons very likely host life, and the entire galaxy is teeming with life, and it's only a matter of time before we find life complex enough to communicate. But if it only started once, right here on Earth, it means that the transition from chemistry to biology is ridiculously complex and very likely super rare. Possibly even rare enough to just have happened once. This is the idea referred to as the rare Earth hypothesis. And likewise, if life started on Mars but then spread to Earth, this proves the idea known as panspermia and suggests that maybe life can exist on nearby objects, but trying to transfer this life elsewhere might be super super challenging. In other words, maybe some star systems where life exists could actually have several objects teeming with life, but anything outside of that star system could still be basically uninhabitable. And so to answer the question of are we Martians? Well, at the moment we don't really have a definitive answer. But it is a serious scientific proposition and something that is being considered by several scientists. You can find some of their studies in the description below. But in order to answer this question once and for all, we first of all need to collect actual samples from Mars, specifically those samples left by the Perseverance rover, and then analyze them on Earth in order to get the exact answers. Now since that mission has been kind of postponed or maybe even cancelled, that particular question is going to be difficult to answer for a pretty long time. 
Which also of course means that we're not going to know much more about the idea of panspermia, or the true origin of life, for at least a few more years, possibly even longer. But because this is such a fascinating topic, and because I personally have actually been exploring this topic for at least two and a half decades now, I'm definitely going to follow this up with the next video sometimes in the future. Which means that you should definitely subscribe if you'd like to find out what the answer is sometimes later. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.